Okay, let's go ahead and hook this up so we can go through and actually get it configured for the first time with our Android device. We've applied power to that. I've got a brand new Android device that we've not hooked anything up to before. We can actually see E5DC. We're gonna go ahead and go to Meshtastic. First time setting up Meshtastic on an Android device. So welcome to Meshtastic, an open source off-grid encrypted communication platform with Meshtastic radios. Let's get started, connect your Meshtastic device with Bluetooth, serial, or Wi-Fi. Setting up encryption as a standard, a default encryption key is set. To enable your own channel enhanced encryptions, go to the channel tab and change the channel name. This will set a random key for AES encryption. To communicate with other devices, they'll need to scan your QR code or follow the shared link to configure the channel settings. So I'm gonna press done. Uh, we need to go ahead and do the scan. So I'm gonna go through and recommend that you turn off the anonymous usage reporting here. Select Bluetooth device. We can actually see the name of the device if we go to our user settings here. Let's just verify this real quick. So it is E5DC, E5DC. So yeah, we're gonna click on it. It's gonna ask for the pin number so we can actually see the pin. This is randomly set for security purposes. Do, 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 six, six, four. Let's click okay. And now they should pair up. Sweet. This is going to start going through some configuration. So you can actually see the configurations going now. It's now hooked up to it for the first time. Let's actually customize this thing now. So we're focusing on this, not so much this. So I'm just going to slide this up out of the way so we can go through and do this. Let's click on this and actually go to the bottom corner where we've got our device. Meshtastic node, we're gonna click this gear icon, and then we're gonna go through and set a user device. Let's go ahead and click the device, and this is where you can go through and set it to where there's a whole bunch of different ways that you can use this. For most folks, we're just gonna stick with the client, which is fine. Um, for other folks who are setting up infrastructure, there are these other things that we can go through at another point and time. So let's go to our user and let's set this thing up. The short name for this one is going to be DN02. For darknet node 02. I'm gonna go up here and do darknet node. Zero, zero, 002. Now we're not going to change anything else here. As soon as we hit send, it's going to send a reboot signal to this guy. So delivery confirm. You can actually see it says rebooting. So it's going to reboot. We're going to click the close button. It's going to obviously have disconnected because it's going to be changing the name from the Meshtastic E5DC. Now it says DN02. Waiting for it to come up. Okay, now that we've got our initial time set up, we can go through scan. We click on it and now pops up with the new name since we've already associated with it. it now says DN02, darknet node 002. I would suggest that you put your username for this for our purposes for the demo. I'm going through and just doing darknet node 00 and then uh, elevating it by one each time. So that's how you can go through and set up your device to go through and at least have your name. You can go through and set up more channels if you'd like. 
Let's think in here. Hmm. Or if it's having an issue, one of the two. That could be an issue. So if in doubt and you're having an issue, uh, let's go through and erase this from anything that we've done in the past. And let's tell it to forget from our Android device. And then let's do scan. It's got hey. a... Yep, pair and connect. So let's go seven, seven, seven three, two. Let's see if this works out now. Okay, it's now got the new name in there. If we connect to it, shows DN02. And now we should be able to go change some settings on that. Channelist. Now it's going to load, which is great. So you may have to disconnect and reconnect to it. Um, it's got a handful of channel names here to start off with for the DEF CON firmware. So you've got DEF CON NET, Hacker Comms, and Node. You can add your own for your own group if you'd like. You can press that button there, but that's outside of scope for today. For device, you can go through and change the role type. Let's just keep everything as by default right now. For position, if you have GPS, we'll go through another step process here. It's set up for every checking in every 900 seconds to start off with. Um, you got other sections here, update 120 seconds. This is where you would go through and set things up for your GPIO pins if you have it hooked up to a GPS unit. Power. Enable power saving mode, we're just gonna leave that as is for right now. Network, if you wanted to go through and make this part of infrastructure, you could scan for Wi-Fi and connect it to the Wi-Fi and make this like a repeater um, for like home. If you wanted to be able to hook up something to MQTT in the future, that's possible, but not necessarily something that we're gonna go through and do right now by default. Um, for display, maybe you have your display in a certain direction or you need to flip some things around. You can go through and say flip screen. You can say if you want it to be in metric or something else. If you've got a different display, you can go through and say what type of display you have. Um, display mode, default, two color, inverted, etc. Compass direction. We're just gonna leave everything the same here. Laura. Use modem presets. We're just gonna use short turbo because this is part of the special settings that we're at DEF CON 4. We want to make sure that we can communicate quickly with each other since we're so close to each other in the same area. We're limiting it to three hops. Power transmit is only set to 30. This is optimized for this small area that is going to happen at DEF CON. If you're going to use this out in the field, um, I would suggest flashing the regular Meshtastic firmware instead. On the Bluetooth side, Bluetooth is enabled. Pairing mode is random pin. You could set a fixed pin if you wanted to. Security, here's public key, private keys. You can refresh these as well. You can turn on serial console debug mode, legacy admin channel, but those are off by default. Other module configurations. You have things to set up for like MQTT. Again, that's turned off by default because that's gonna send a lot of traffic. Let's just keep it there for now. And serial, this is if you, instead of wanting to be able to connect things via Bluetooth, you could plug in a USB into your device and do it that way. For the more paranoid folks, that's the better way to go. For those who don't care, you're using Bluetooth, okay. External notifications, if you wanted to hook up an additional LED, a buzzer, or a vibrator, you can absolutely go through and do that, and then you're going to go through and tell what GPIO pins you're gonna go through and use here. You can also use I2S as a buzzer. Uh, external notifications, I think we just went through, yeah, that we just went through that. Store and forward for different messages. We're not doing that right now, but for other infrastructure needs, that's kind of cool that you have that. 
range test if you wanted to see how far you can get signals from your devices. This is a great way to do it from one node to another. Telemetry. Um, device metrics updates interval. It's quite a bit. Right now we did turn that off from one of the very first things that we started going through and doing. If you wanted to hook up other sensors to that, it could be useful information. You can make canned messages. So maybe if you had a, a device that had a rotary encoder, you could go through and turn these canned messages on. And depending on which uh, position that you have your ro rotary encoder, you could have different preset messages. Kind of cool. That's, a, that's an option that's just built in. They do have some mesh testing devices that have the ability to do like walkie-talkie-like or radio. That's where you'd go through and configure that. Neighbor information, you can go through and say, well, what information do you want to be able to broadcast to your neighbors about your device? Not being used here. Detection sensor, kind of cool uh, being able to say, send bell with message alerts, friendly names. Um, Pax counter, this will again do a, a constant transmit to see how far you can go through and actually, hey, this is like a keep alive and the cool thing is your backup and restore is a heck of a lot easier than it's been in the past. So you've got import configurations, export configurations, reboot, shutdown, factory reset, and no DB reset. If you go through and make your own channel list and you want to be able to go from like one device to say a secondary device and you want to have the same settings or whatnot, or you want to be able to set up your own channels or whatnot, it's nice to know you can go through and import and export those. So that's for the settings. Um, right now, I'm not providing phone location to mesh, and I'm not sending anonymous usage statistics. So let's go over the rest of the app real quick. So these are the default channels that you have. So you've got DEFCON NET, Hacker Comms, and Node.Chat. Right now, nobody's here and talking on it in our test situation, which is fine. We're here. So... This is just our early test. If there are other mesh-tastic nodes around, like if I go through and plug in a different one here, just off camera. We'll wait to see what pops up over here. That helps if I get the right one. Let's get a different node up. Oh. So you can see the different mesh tastic devices that are around you off of this tab, which will give you, hey, if there's a whole list of people around you that are broadcasting, it's great. If I go through and do a test chat on the DEF CON net, you can actually hey. see it popped up here. Uh, so if you're gonna interact with the badge side of the house, you can go through and click this button. Hey. You're gonna see test from DN01, new test node. Hey, and with the users, it popped up. Hey, we can actually see, that's a uh, pretty close client. We can see some information about it. If we go over to the text side of the house, we can see that there's one new notification and Hey, there's somebody else who went through and, and did a test. We go, hello. Boom. Cool. So we can see that we can't see anything like GPS. We've got a time that's now being synchronized from our phone over to the dis device. So it's got time, minutes, and then seconds in the bottom corner. Kind of cool. And we can see that there's one online individual that we can see right now. No satellites. No messages. So, cool. That's uh, what things look like by default here. So that's at least the messaging side of the house for you to get up and running. That's to see what clients are around you. If you wanted to private message somebody, you could by clicking on them. 
and you can actually see some information about the device, the long name, the short name, the node number, the ID. You could go through and exchange information, favorite it, direct message, exchange position. And if we wanted to go direct message, we go PM test. So private message test, we hit send. Over here, actually, it's gonna to be to my other device over here. If I go, turn this on, and let's focus the screen here. Two nodes, we've got DN1 and EN, e, or E5DC. We've got DEFCON net, test, hello. No apps found, that's fine. Okay. So interestingly enough, I don't see individual messages. Oh, here we go. Active chats. Okay, that just shows you the active chats versus if we can go through and do another test. So let's try to do this the opposite way. Let's try to look at our devices that are around us. And if this is node 02, let's message node 02. And let's go PM test. Two. Now we can actually see new message from. So you can see it on the screen here that it says PM test two. And we can also see a message from DN01 PM test two. So private message test two. So that does go through and work. Those are for the private side of the house. Uh, let's see, what else do we have to go through? So that's how to message an individual. If you have maps enabled, you can go through and do this. I'm not gonna get specific on that right now because I don't wanna be doxing folks. If you wanted to set up different channels and comms, you can go through and do that and exchange that information pretty easily by scanning this information. And that's a quick overview. If you wanted to not hook up Bluetooth, but you wanted to hook this up to the Wi-Fi or talk to another device that's on your network, you can actually give it the IP address and have your ESP hooked to your Wi-Fi and make that a node. Or you can also plug in the USB for serial. So that's a quick tutorial of how to go through and customize your device with Android and your Seed XIAO ESP32S3. Thanks, and I hope to see you on the mesh.